Let's do this. Go nuts. Your weapon, sir, will kill. The ultimate Forged in Fire matchup. You are the Forged in Fire champion. Two champion blades in a deadly weapon showdown. It will kill. 20 blades, 20 champions. You decide the winner. Forged in Fire Madness. This is a Musketeer's rape, you're... Ooh. Jesse Ewing's my name, 34 years old, and I kill bugs for a living. Pest control, good stuff. I know that to come on Forge and Fire is a huge undertaking. However, I know that I have the skills and passion to go all the way. Originating in the early 1600s, the Musketeer's rapier was the distinctive weapon of the colorful French Musketeers of the Guard. These elite troops were the first line of defense for French royalty. Featuring a thin diamond profile blade that tapers down to a point, its extreme lightweight made it excellent for quick slashing cuts and pinpoint stabs. In addition, the weapon's double clamshell guard aided in defense by protecting the user's hand, especially during one-on-one -on -one duels. Tales of the swashbuckling musketeers are world famous to this day and can be seen in the film The Three Musketeers. The Flambear's Rapier. My name is Dave Parthmore. I'm a bit and spur maker. It's like jewelry for horses. As a metal worker, you pretty much wear every hat. Hopefully I'll do well. I would hate to go out there and make a fool of myself. The Flambear's Rapier was popular in Europe from the mid 17th century through the early 18th century as an ornate and stylized gentleman's sword. Rapiers were light, agile weapons that could be wielded single-handed to precisely administer pinpoint stabs and cuts. The undulating double-edged blade design increased the length of the cutting surface while frustrating an opponent's attempts to slide his weapon closer to the wielder's hands. Today, you can see the Flambear's Rapier in the hit mobile strategy game, Dominations. I'm taking on the Musketeer Rapier. Well, I'm gonna go with bar stock size of 80 CRV2, super strong, should hold up very well to the testing. That's gonna be the hardest part because I don't know what it has to survive. Hey! I'm about 40 and a half inches total length, which gives me plenty of room for error. I think I'm gonna start working on the fuller. <laughs> I can't complain about that, my first ever fuller. With all the factors involved in this quench, the low roof of the garage, the tall quench tank, a ladder just to reach above it, I'm hoping that I can get it right the first time. Catastrophically, the sword drops out of my hands. I hear the tip hit the bottom of the tank. I pull the sword out of the quench. I see this huge bow. I got to get this thing in my straightening jig. I have no idea what's going to come out. I'm really scared. I'm really nervous, hoping for the best and praying for a miracle. So the sword's cooled off in the straightening jig. Let's see if I just uh, performed a miracle here. It's time to open it up and see what's inside. Holy crap. There's slight warpage on there, but nothing crazy that I can't fix with a grinder. She's hard. I've never made a sword before, so I'm ecstatic right now. So with my blade mostly done, and I've already got the clamshell guard fitted out. Guard fits. For this handle, I'm going to go with a nice hardwood and offset that with different color micarta, and then epoxy together so I can shape it off of the sword. Oh, gosh. I go to remove the handle, and she's stuck. I really don't know what the heck to do at this point. Seriously contemplating taking this thing to the bandsaw, and I look at the sword, and the rear part is separated. I think I can save this. Try it again second time. Oh, imagine that. And that's how it should have went the first time. Yeah, that came together pretty nice. With the time I got left, I'm going to start shaping all these quillions and knuckle bows and all that fruit fruit stuff on the handles. The blade itself, I'm pretty much happy with the geometry of it, but I want to see if I can remove some weight at the tip. I want Doug to be swinging that thing all over the place and having a good time with it. But now that everything's permanently affixed, just got to clean it up, sharp it up a little bit. I can't wait to see the judges test this thing. We're here at my forge in Connecticut. Let's go move some steel. I have to take this hunk of steel and get it into shape. And with my equipment, it's a slow process, but it's an accurate process. 
It's with a ply press. You really have a sense of what the metal is doing. You're not just relying on your eyes. You're relying on your feel, touch. You could say there's an intimacy. As a metal worker, if you need a jig or a tool, you make it, you build it. This is my jig. Just a bunch of nipples from large to small. I'm going to create my serpentine on my blade with these. I set this up for the serpentine to begin wide, so it's shaped like a very narrow Christmas tree all the way up. There's your serpentine blade. I need to do a little dressing up on my basket help. I'm going to flame blue this piece so it has a nice uniform color to it. Now I need to get my counterbalance on the back end, that pommel. That is really key because you have so much material hanging out in front. You've got to have that counterweight in the back end. You could have a heavy blade as long as it's balanced. I have a cut. I squared it. And now I'm attempting to tap it so I can thread it onto the tang of the sword. Ah, I didn't want that to happen. Oh, boy. I forced it, and uh, the tap snapped. Not a good thing. My brain's going a million miles an hour. So I grabbed a larger piece of stock. It's a mild steel. It should be much easier to work with. Raise the weight a little bit, but I need that counterbalance for it to function properly. It's stabby. It'll stab. All right, bladesmiths, welcome to the kill test. I'm going to take your rapiers and deliver some killing slashes and thrusts on this big carcass. For these musketeer swords, it's time to find out if you're all for one champion or one for all the runner-ups. <laughs> Jesse, you're up first. You ready for this? Let's cut some bacon. All right, let's do this. To be chopping into a full-size pig, this is crazy. I'm worried because there's bones inside that pig, but at this point, it's in the judge's hands, and I can't wait to see what happens. You gotta work out. All right, Jesse, this edge is sharp. A rapier cut a big in half? <laughs> That's very interesting. <laughs> for every slash, the edge lands exactly where I want it to be. Okay. Overall, sir, for this test, it will kill. <laughs> All right, David, it's your turn. You ready? I'm ready, yes, sir. Let's do this. My blade may be a little sexier, maybe, but performance is everything. All right, David, the balance of this blade allows it to be able to be maneuvered quite easily. On the thrusting, easy penetration all the way, and on slashing, it cut spine and even deeper into the flesh. Overall, sir, your blade will kill. Thank you, sir. All right, gentlemen, it's time for the strength test, a little thing I like to call the wheel of pain. Now, a rapier needs to be a fast, light, flexible weapon. We're going to see how flexible yours are. All right, Jesse, so I've got your blade strapped into our wheel of pain right now. Now, I'm going to be flexing it in both directions. I'll be taking it all the way to that far red peg, holding it for about three seconds, and we'll see if it comes back true, and then we'll go in the other direction. All right? Go nuts. <laughs> that ship sailed. <laughs> so my blade's strapped into this crazy machine that's about to get pulled and pushed and bent beyond its limits, and I'm freaking out. You've got your precious baby that you've worked so hard on right there and $10,000 on the other side of it.
it's back to true, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Are you kidding me? <laughs> okay, Jesse, first off, remarkable. But I mean, there's a lot of weight in this blade, a lot of mass. So to have it flex the way it did and come back virtually to true, this blade is still straight enough to fight with, which is excellent. Thank you. Good job. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> All right, metal workers. To test the strength and overall construction of your blade, I'll be attacking these steel bucklers. Remember, this test is not about what your blades do to the bucklers, but what those bucklers can do to your blades. All right, Dave, you ready? Yes, sir. OK. <laughs> So Dave, first off, everything could be about 20% smaller. Having said that, the balance point is right there in, in between those two fingers, which is what I want, because now I can control the tip. I don't really feel any damage. It flexed very well and came back to true. So very good job. Thank you, sir. Nice and done. Nice job. Thank you. Now it's your turn. Which weapon will you choose? Forged in Fire Madness.